So if you're new to my channel, my name is Anna Jorgensen. I'm a dating coach for men in Vancouver, Canada. Welcome. Um, so let's go into the four types of narcissism. So the first type of narcissism is grandiose. They are the leaders of our world and they are very charismatic, they're outgoing, they are probably extroverts. That's the type of personality type where it's just look at me and give me your attention and they have zero humility in asking for that kind of attention. They don't necessarily have a mean streak in them, but they are self-absorbed and self-centered. The second type would be the malignant grandiose and that would be the same as as the grandiose but they do have a mean streak they actually want others to suffer so that they can gain so they get they feel like they get extra points if someone has actually suffered for them to be able to get ahead they'll lie cheat steal and do whatever they want to do but particularly if it's going to hurt somebody else another type of narcissist is the stealth or victim narcissist, so that would be the covert narcissist, where they use mental manipulation. They are not necessarily outwardly grandiose, even though internally they are still feel very entitled. And they use the victim card to manipulate others or get what they want or get attention and sympathy. And they tend to blame the world for everything that goes wrong in their life. They never take ownership of the, actually all narcissists do this, none of them take ownership for where they're at in life. Now that's something that a lot of people do anyway, but that doesn't mean you're a narcissist. Nonetheless, definitely a narcissist will not take responsibility and they blame, if they're a covert or victim mentality narcissist, they blame the world. And these are the types that are most prone to depression or the appearance of depression. And then the fourth type is the communal narcissist. The communal narcissist is someone who is basically the sneakiest narcissist of them all because they are a do-gooder, but they're a do-gooder for appearances sake, not because they actually empathize with the, whoever they're doing good for. They show up at just volunteering at their church or they have foundations or they you know, are the heads of big causes they're actually doing good in the world, but it's not because they're actually people who empathize with the cause that they're after. They're actually looking for the attention and validation that being the philanthropist or the do-gooder will get from playing that role, basically.